Welcome to NeuroNoodle's Neurofeedback and Neuropsychology Podcast, featuring tech legend Jake Gunkelman. He's the man who has read well over half a million brain scans, and Dr. Marie Swingle, author of iMinds. Our goal is to provide information and promote options for better mental health. The NeuroNoodle Podcast is supported by listeners and businesses just like you. Open first and... So, so Jay, what what do we have here? We got an ex NFL player. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I've got the data converted to global average, which Nunez recommends uh, that or current source density as a montage to look at the EG and spectra with, and uh, we see some uh, visual processing lambda waves at the back of the head, which are common. Uh, all you have to do is have you know, be looking around. And when your eyes uh, become fixed on an image or an object, uh, you, you, know, you create an event related potential and that's seen in the back of the head. Now, um, uh, you, we expect to see its eyes open. So you don't have to have organized alpha, but we usually expect to see some semblance of a rhythmicity in the back of the head. You can see some, one, two plus, but um, there's a lot of slower activity that you notice. So this is the data cleaned up. Uh, just so you know that this is the same data that you sent, um, right. I'm going to unclean it by clicking on the ICA, which was used to clean it. This is going to be, this is what the data looked like. So. All of these blinks, if it's not underlined in blue here, uh, it was a, it was turned into an acceptable piece. Electrode pops at CZ. Um, you know, the, 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 this is not an unusual uh, quality of a recording, and it has to be uh, managed with modern neuroscience tools. So uh, I cleaned it. So what I'm going to do is close this uh, original version and I'm just going to go back and reopen the, the cleaned up version of the same file. And again, all the eye blinks are gone. A lot of the muscle is gone. Uh, there, there may be uh, subtle pieces that uh, have some uh, faster activity in them. You can see beta up front, that's spindling beta. And um, uh, that there's some of that at the uh, frontal uh, midline, uh, but the, the basic background rhythmicity uh, it doesn't hold a steady state alpha. But again, it's eyes open. So you, you can't fault them until we actually get to see the eyes closed. But quite honestly, it looks like we've got alpha that's not up to speed. And we can look at the spectra of this, but this is just cruising through the file. You know, a couple of good things. Number one, there's no epileptiform paroxysmal uh, discharges. We see posterior sharp uh, activity of lambda, which just means he's looking around. Now, excessive looking around can be seen in P50 and anxiety. There's... Uh, this this should be caught as as a, a electrode related issue, and it wasn't. Um, I'm not sure why here. Let's see. Seventy. Hey, while you're doing that, hi, hi, Dr. Murray. Hello. <laughs> we're we're looking at a ex NFL player and uh, got a little scan reading going on here by the man who's read over half a million of these yeah so th this is a master at work so it's cleaned up it's cleaned up and uh, you know you can see it's almost boringly similar page to page to page as we go here there's not a lot of dynamics that uh, there's some uh, times when it gets a little slower but you know it's eyes open and uh we've got um rhythmicity and again if you count the rhythmicity, it doesn't add up into the traditional alpha band. Now, I'm just going to run all of this through the Fourier, which will give us a spectra and 
kind of stack up how much energy was present at what frequency. And I'm going to colorize this. So traditional band definitions, yellow is the alpha band. Now, it may just be my bad eye, but, you know, I think that's awfully slow for a background rhythm. And you can see it's present here, and we have slow content in the temporal areas. Um, in quantitative EEG, quantitative MRI correlational studies, uh, uh, um, Dr. Thatcher uh, showed that the delta content ends up being associated with white matter changes. And the alpha frequency and beta frequencies are associated with gray matter changes. So we've got um, a, a, you know, a slow background. Now there's a hint of some bit of some faster as well. And his eyes open, his dominant alpha is in the theta band. And it's, it's way too slow. And it's the coherent feature up front like alpha would be. And it's at a 0.6, which is in a raw value, uh, a mild hypercoherence. It's above 0.5, so that, that's the rule of thumb kind of upper limit that's, in, that's acceptable and is above that. So um, uh, we've got... Um, affect regulation is a probable uh, feature when we see the uh, uh, hypercoherence up front. And uh, again, way too slow and what looks like maybe some uh, white matter involvement. Now, white matter is associated with uh, uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathies, uh, again, with, you know, with uh, more severe injuries. In the discriminant, um, uh, TBI discriminant, uh, the, the presence of a mild traumatic brain injury, which he, he really does not have, he has a severe brain injury, um, but in the presence of a mild traumatic brain injury, um, the identification of the trauma versus no trauma is almost all alpha and theta components, excuse me, alpha and beta components. Uh, the severity index is heavily loaded with, with delta and theta uh, components as well, not, not just alpha and beta. Uh, so uh, the, the severity uh, would look to be severe. Um, uh, the lambda at the back of the head uh, may account for some of this low content at 0102, but lambda doesn't occur Elsewhere, it's focal at 0102. So um, this is eyes open. We're going to open the five-minute eyes closed file. The beginning is the amp warm-up. That's pitched. Anything underlined in blue could not be cleaned up uh, sufficiently. Obviously, this is an electric pop. Um, and, and so underlined in blue is not going to be part of the analysis. Uh, all of the eye blinks and so forth were just as florid in this as it was in the uh, prior. You can see that there's actually a, 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 a slow uh, irregularity uh, in the left uh, temporal area. And uh, it's, it's actually got a field uh, to the adjacent electrodes. So it's real, otherwise it would have been cleaned out. And um, uh, he's drowsy. Big bursts of alpha followed by alpha falling apart, alpha dropouts, uh, alpha return. Uh, he, he's drowsy. And as we go through the EG, uh, alpha will uh, drop out and slow. And that's, again, a, a drowsy transition. You can see the irregularity in the left temporal area, again, with, with fields surrounding it. So um, we, we've got uh, 
um, an EEG that can be processed, and it's going to end up showing us uh, kind of the localization for for findings. Uh, again, anything underlined in blue, uh, there was enough movement to end up not being able to clean it out sufficiently. And uh, th those are extracted uh, with a mark artifact. And um, uh, pieces uh, that are uh, marked won't be part of the spectra, basically, when we process this. But you can see a persistent um, a rhythmicity up front. And we can count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who kind of finishes nine there. So it's an alpha band. Uh, unlike the eyes open, we actually achieve an alpha, but there's also intermix slower content where a cycle and a half, which would be eight hertz, just barely makes it, and sometimes it, it doesn't. So we'll have a mixture of frequencies. And, uh, and again, a concern over uh, left uh, temporal. And in the eyes uh, open, the left parietal alpha is large. You can see it's still large and the, the temporal next to it as well. So, uh, um, you know, the, the rest of the EG is very similar. Uh, the flat spot at the end is cut off. Uh, you know, goodness knows what. <laughs> he, he, he didn't go a flat line on us there at the very end. So that, that has to be. Well, the tech so. did. <laughs> well, that's, it's, it's not uncommon at the end of a record to have a, a section with flats, and, and they, they're just routinely snipped. So um, this is the cleaned up version. And um, uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, alpha right greater than left, which is not an uncommon asymmetry, the verbal hemisphere being a little bit more involved than the nonverbal hemisphere. Um, the, the peak on this is 977, but it's not the only peak. Remember with the eyes open, we saw this slower rhythm. So this down below the alpha band was the background rhythm we saw in the eyes open. It's still present in the CEG. The very slow content that we saw is also still present. And alpha up front in the eyes open was hypercoherent. And normally we look at eyes closed coherence to judge for affect regulation. Affect regulation is um, things all the way from mood state depression to agitation to anxiety to motivation. I mean, it, it, it's, it's the regulation. It's not the specifics of the mood or anything, but it's the frontal lobe regulates that. Both attention and affect are regulated up here. And, and motor as well. Uh, the, the alpha, primary alpha tuning is not bad, but you can see the slower alpha and slower content are also present up here. Um, yeah, there, there's no need to go any further forward than the frontal midline, but uh, we, we've got to uh, uh, address this. Now, uh, the coherence up front, the raw value coherence, is now it's 0.8 um, and uh, they'll map at a 0.9 coherence can only go to one I mean he's hitting his head on the ceiling here the, the, there's a ceiling effect of one and it, it was 0.8 something mapped at 0.9 this, this is a super high level of coherence up front and the frontal lobe again regulates attention and affect. And uh, um, it, uh, um, uh, the, the excess alpha isn't the only problem, uh, but it is affective regulation. The other issues up front are the slow alpha up front. Now, the slow edge alpha tracks ischemia, and we see uh, ischemia in post traumatic ischemia, migraine ischemia. 
vascular change with aging causing ischemia. We can't tell one from the other, but you know, you've given me the history that he was a pro ball player and you know, uh, kids that play high school ball uh, uh, sometimes come out with, with CTE. So if you've made it all the way through the pros, uh, there's it, it, a likelihood that you got uh, yourself banged around some as well. Now, um, I, I have to say, I, I don't know anything about who this is, um, but I did not see cardioballistics. <clears throat> Pardon me. I did not see cardioballistics in the in in the um, EEG. So this is not a short, thick lineman. This is somebody who's got more uh, length than uh, um, uh, to them. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, cardioballistics are uh, uh, EKG sharp uh, QRS complexes seen in the EEG as the electrical event of the heartbeat. <clears throat> and if you're thick chest, short neck um, uh, structure, you see that in the EEG very dramatically. We didn't see that. So this is not, uh, uh, this, is, this is not an interior lineman uh, who, who looks like uh, a rugby player. Um, not, not my head? No, this is not Pete. Uh, okay. uh, the, uh, Pete, Pete, Pete would if uh, if I ever saw yours, I, I would guarantee there would be cardioballistics in it. Um, it's just inherent to the structure. There's nothing wrong with cardioballistics, other than the fact that they damn near ruin your EEG spectra unless you know how to take them out. Um, uh, but the, uh, there weren't any in here. Anyway, uh, likely. Uh, post-traumatic ischemia because of the history. It's ischemia. We just uh, we, we're ascribing it to post-traumatic because we know some of the history and um, white matter uh, involvement um, in the temporal area and posteriorly and parietally. And um, the the ischemia that has white matter associated with it is quite often visible in an MRI. And uh, you'd see tropic changes in the area. Uh, if it's just uh, the slow alpha peak, which is ischemia, but there's no slowing with it, it's you know it's not that imageable. That this is a gray matter neural network property, but white matter change is what you get this delta from. Delta rhythm in the EEG is generated when a white matter doesn't innervate the cortex and you get a sheet dipole oscillating in the delta range. So that's how we get all of this is essentially white matter input to the cortex that would normally be there isn't. So um, uh, we, we've got uh, um, ischemic change uh, somewhat frontally. Uh, we've got affect regulatory with a very high level of coherence, um, uh, hi hyper coherence up front that's really quite extraordinary, eyes open. It dropped down considerably eyes open uh, from, uh, from this eyes closed extreme, um, uh, but it didn't disappear. There are some people that you just open their eyes and get them involved in something and the, and the affective regulatory problem seems to be gone until they're back at rest. And um, for him, it doesn't, it doesn't quite wipe it out when he opens his eyes and engages. Um, uh, I would expect, you know, you look at the alpha at the back of the head, 01, 02, it's a little bit skewed to the side. But we start to look at the parietal area and the language hemisphere has more alpha and the temporal versus temporal has more alpha. And um, when this area starts to idle more, uh, you start to have comprehension problems. Now, the alpha is still in the alpha band. Um, here, eyes closed, which suggests that there's probably reasonably good residual function, but 
how much uh, disturbance the ischemia and white matter change have on uh, comprehension is, is hard to predict. Um, but I'd, I'd expect um, that he probably experiences some symptom with respect to, uh, uh, you know, kind of generally comprehending stuff, especially you know, if, if tired. Now, uh, um, uh, the, the affect regulation, um, uh, high coherence and alpha band up front, uh, quite commonly, uh, they, they, they give uh, people uh, antidepressants. And um, the, the alpha here is below 10 and would probably respond to an SSRI. However, the slow content in the EEG here contraindicates all of the SSRIs except Zoloft. Uh, the iSpot D study with over 3,000 patients in it, uh, the, the, uh, where either slow content or epileptiform content were identified, Zoloft was the only one that maintained efficacy. So uh, that uh, if there's a pharmacological intervention for uh, the affect regulation, uh, Zoloft would be the uh, uh, kind of the choice uh, that would be matched. Uh, to the physiology. Anyway, um, Jay, you're you're the tech legend, Doctor Marie. You're the you're the doctor. You got the skins on the wall. You're the one that to, has to be careful about what you say. I'm the one that has the EEG done. If I'm sitting there and you're explaining this to me, what are you going to tell me? Um, well, I mean, I, I think this is where I bow to the master. You know, we, we, we joke a lot about, you know, what wallpaper Jay has chosen to get or not. But, I mean, we, we can't, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm never, never going to debate, um, uh, you know, what what he shares just because of his Well, what knowledge. I was looking for from you was like all the caveats and all the, you know, the prefaces of, uh, you know, get a neurologist, get this, get that, get an MRI. Well, all we're looking for is well, like I mean, what, we're, what we're talking about here is your legal liability. I mean, you know, th this is where um, if, if, if you don't have Jay doing your work, then then get a neurologist. But I mean, if you want to talk to colleges and things, I mean, now we're getting into politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If, yeah. If, and, if, if, if this was not Jay uh, yeah. without, you know, all of his knowledge, you you would hear me doing a very different um, spiel. I mean, I, okay, I, I, that, that, that the was the professional term is Jay has been grandfathered in 40 years ago with <laughs> the disclaimer is done so yeah. so so jay if you go down to that i under i don't understand the graphs it's like a stock market but i do understand the head the little picture of the head with the blue and colors what's going on with my head so oh can, can i jump turn... in before you say that okay yeah. Uh, people need to learn to uh, understand more than the heads because my main issue is if you're not properly artifacted, your head will show all kinds of really nice pictures. Um, and uh, ah, of course, my video does funny things. Yeah, so please, please, please learn how to read the uh, what Jay was reading. Uh, the pictures, I think, can help maybe to, to show your, your client. Uh, Jay, would you agree with that? Yeah, Thank you know, the, you I'm a it, dumb football it, player. I don't understand. What, okay. the raw, it, it all comes from the raw EEG, yeah. and and you have to have a skill set uh, appropriate to look at that in order to end up confidently interpreting yeah. uh, the, the the maps and the spectra. It's and you go from the raw, you go from the raw to the, to the spectra to the maps, and the maps are are. are uh, you know, averaged across a whole bunch of time, uh, you can see uh, 8 to 10, alpha 1, alpha 2. He's got background alpha all the way through the alpha band from 8 on up to 12. Um, and But you can see the slow content and the <clears throat> slow content. And uh, that's not that common. And uh, in addition to that i've changed this from power uh to uh, to magnitude which is actually mislabeled amplitude but if going back to power you don't see anything in the fast frequencies 
1 over f. The higher the frequency, the smaller the signal. So um, power squares things to allow us to see more on the y-axis. But when you square something below 1, it disappears. So we go back to magnitude, the integral average of amplitude, and now you can see that there's actually some content in these uh, frequencies as well. And um, th there's, there's no uh, uh, beta hotspot, um, uh, that, uh, there's no beta spindles, uh, uh, things like that. Uh, what we have here is basically alpha and slow content, and uh, the uh, the, the alpha intruding up into the temporal area uh, and slower than uh, the, the traditional alpha band, uh, it ends up being uh, probably a, a, a portion of what he's experiencing. I, I'm assuming some language comprehension uh, yeah, if impairment. If I could just jump in with Jay, one of the things I was actually positively surprised for that the the alpha i mean it's bad but it's not as bad as one would expect in a ball player or a hockey player jay do you think i'm being yeah. too pollyannish uh, here or I, uh, I i think this in the eyes closed is looking like this but i have to recall and we can get back to this real quick and uh, we can open this up uh, real quick as well um this is the spectra in the eyes open with the background frequencies in more of an impaired look. So, um, again, the slowed alpha and the left temporal, the amount of slow content in it. Leave it. Uh, and this was a cleaned up EEG. This, was, this wasn't some you know, difficult uh, mess. Um, the the uh, perceptual integration uh, at, at P3 has got a gigantic amount of slow content. Um, we've got slow content in the temporal areas bilaterally. Um, Is uh, this the, person still playing? I, I don't no, know he's been retired uh, 25, 30 years. I was thinking with the perceptual integration that that probably wouldn't be too helpful. On so <laughs> if he's been retired about 30 years, he's probably, close, years. To, probably, well, probably close to my age then. So, uh, um, yeah, you know, Try I not to give not any to, identifiers. Yeah. I, I would hope not to have any, uh, uh specific, uh, uh, background rhythmicity eyes open yeah. at, you know, below the alpha band. And, um, uh, you know, the, the amount of white matter change that's in this is uh, uh, probably uh, associated with his, uh, his historic um, yeah, occupation. What, what I do suggest, and I, I was mentioning it as I was going through the data, is that an MRI uh, would end up showing in this case because of the white matter involvement. If you had just slowed alpha or alpha related or alpha and beta related changes, those are the neural network properties of gray matter. And that, that's not imageable with an MRI at this point. So we're, we're basically looking at um, uh, white matter change is something that's going to be seen in an MRI. Now, it, um, there, there's a, a tendency for people to often try to dismiss uh, changes as age-related, but these these are not uh, diffuse; they're localized and uh, wouldn't be, uh, you know, typical for just uh, yeah, the, uh, slow normal life trophic changes. Uh, they, you know, th there's there's uh, spatial specificity to some of this. <laughs> Probably got some uh, wax back here. When you say back here, like in the the spectrum or in a, a space uh, uh, head, uh, or um, that the, there's white matter change that loads to the back of the head. Now, 
if you if you look at uh, um, uh, the, the stats, just the average, where are you more likely to have a head injury just if you look at everybody that has head injuries? Orbital frontal surface and the, the, and the lateral uh, frontal temporal surfaces. Those are the most commonly I impacted locations. But here we've got the uh, back of head. So if he was a backstroker and he hit his head on the wall a lot, this yeah. would be it. You know, so. Well, he got, if he was a quarterback, he got sacked a lot. Well, that could do it, I guess. Now, I don't want to. I mean, we're not doing parlor tricks here. We're 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 looking at data and you know looking for clues. Um, what do you see anything that would cause dizziness or vertigo? Well, um, uh, the areas that have uh, the in, inputs uh, here uh, are. Uh, are uh, perceptual and perceptual integration. Uh, ver vertigo, uh, as a uh, as a complaint, uh, quite often comes from an inner ear uh, issue, and that's not the kind of testing that we're doing here. Got it. Uh, if if he had uh, brainstem auditory evoke response. B A E R testing, they could actually test the the from the tympanic membrane through the bony structures, the, the uh, hammer anvil stirrup uh, to the cochlea uh, to 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 the uh, uh, inner ear and each uh, neuron transmitted all the way up to the cortex, and they could see exactly where the problem is, um, and that. That kind of testing is done. It, it's extraordinarily uh, um, it, it, it easily done. Uh, they they sit you down and have you listen to a bunch of clicks, and um, uh, the the results pop out real easily. And um, what we saw in the EEG included lambda at the back of the head, which is um, occasionally if you have. Um, uh, an, an open thalamic gate, you can get an excessive uh, P100, the arrival on the cortex is a bit, a bit early and jumpy. Um, but for auditory, we would expect it at the vertex. And okay. we, we didn't see any, uh, any of that. Um, but we if did I see... If I piggyback what Jay was saying, you know, when you have the, um, the marker at P3 as well as in the occipit, um, I, I would not see that as an atypical symptom at all. Yeah. So if you would have to pick a symptom, again, we're not doing parlor tricks, but based on what you see here, you didn't know who this person was. What would you guess? Comprehension memory from the slow content in the temporal areas and mood regulation from the eyes closed alpha up front. And how, what would we train? Cognitive slowing, I think, is a big year too, just generally speaking. Yeah. Um, you know, the... the uh, is this a brain brightening it, thing? It, like, what, what do you... Uh, brain brightening, but this is, uh, this is possibly something uh, that, that could utilize uh, stimulation technologies to, uh, to, to help uh, deal with the uh, uh, slow content here. Uh, uh, the, uh, um, you know, we're, we're not giving him clinical advice here, right. uh, but, but there are, uh, uh, stimulation techniques, uh, that, that can activate the cortex in this area. And you like the, TMS or like elect, electric? Uh, well, TMS is one of them, TDCS, TACS, the, uh, uh, photobiomodulation. There's quite a few techniques that can stimulate the cortex in this area. Now, it can't be overstimulated if this is due to trauma and ischemia. Uh, you can't overstimulate without causing problems. Um, if you have impaired flow, uh, uh, I, this is really terrible art. Uh, I'm going to piggyback Jay as he's looking there here. Um, really really emphasize what jay was saying uh, there is a danger not just in overtraining 
uh, but please go to the literature. In many cases, more is not better. Um, again, many people disagree with me. I, I respect that, but I go slow, steady, cautious, do groupings and take a mini break uh, because sometimes the, the, the treatment effects can come a little bit uh, further out. I know many p individuals, you know, or practitioners are doing two or three appointments a week. If you're doing something like that, please ensure that you take breaks for the brain to catch up. Yeah. I tend to be more conservative. I go a lot slower with, with more breaks. Um, Jay, do you want to kind of weigh in there? Am I being over? Yeah, it's absolutely a, a, a critical. What I've drawn here is, is a, a, a blood flow with a kink in the hose. We all played with the hose when we were young. If you kink the hose, you can stop the flow. Well, ischemia is a decreased ability to provide glucose and, and oxygen downstream. So it's an impaired flow. And so it's like a kink in the hose that's not quite closed. Now, the brain controls its own blood supply and it will open this up if we make a small demand for function downstream. We tend to open this up as long as we don't overtax the supply line ability here uh, we'll we'll be able to have this slowly open up like a root on a sidewalk this is going to end up finally popping this back open but what happens if we make a larger demand downstream than this impaired flow can supply then the po2 <laughs> Uh, pardon the pup in the background. The decreased perfusion pressure of oxygen uh, gives you hypoxia. Hypoxia creates edema. Edema is pressure, and that pressure is going to make the ischemia much worse. Give a milk bone. So that's why after an injury, they if it's a significant head injury. Uh, they'll put you into a, into a coma so that you're not creating any demand. This can start to heal. So I'm not sure what the pup is barking for here. But thanks, oh, Dave, for that drawing. That that I oh, think he, the visual is so helpful for our viewers. I've missed this. I missed this good art. Yeah. Anyway, my my apologies for my terrible art. Not needed. But, no, but, no. To Wonderful. take it to the logical extreme, uh, cell death. <laughs> Here, here's a little tombstone with some grass growing around the bottom of it. Um, uh, the, the, you, if you uh, get decreased oxygen, hypoxia leads to glutamate cascade, which leads to cell death. That's why they put you in the damn coma. So that it doesn't lead all the way to the logical extreme of killing off brain cells. Now they'll let you recover once you've recovered well enough, and, and you're you're not creating an excessive demand. Um, that then you know you can slowly put an area back on online and over time open this up and bring function back. But you've got to you've got to take your time. You can't rush uh, the recovery or or else anyway pardon the, the horrible art no i think you you emphasize your point there jay so you're the picasso of uh eeg <laughs> <laughs> so these so these poor guys that played you know 30 40 years ago now you know they're we're seeing the end here and from what I understand, you can't really see what's going on with CTE till you're dead. And you donate your brain to Boston. Yeah, you know, uh, CTE ends, ends up being predictable from the white matter and gray matter changes in the in the in the cortical areas. Uh, there, um, an MRI will end up showing the tropic changes, which are really quite awful looking. Uh, in in CTE, uh, so um, at at the stage that this is, if you had an MRI that would show the white matter change, we would be able to say whether this is likely uh, um, going to show up as significant CTE or not. And given the delta content surrounding the back of the head, I I think we probably are going to have some 
uh, um, you know, evidence of that. Yeah. I think the value here is for, you know, uh, parents uh, pushing their kids. Um, I would say for parents, guardians and, and responsible coaches to just uh, protect youth until they're old enough to make decisions for themselves. And then this is, of course, when we get into the argument of the gladiator. If you want to be a gladiator and, and you know what the, 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 the brain death uh, risk is, so be it. Uh, but, you know, from eight to, you know, 19 or so, um, I, I think that's where we really have to figuratively hold these young men's heads. <laughs> so, based, yeah. based on what Jay has taught me, if I had a kid playing, if I saw any type of posturing, anything with the hands after a hit, whatever it is, you're not going in. That that no way, no how. Yeah. So and I get a pre. I get a pre. If you have a, a young child uh, that you want to play ball, get the most extensive pre-imaging that you can. So that we know what we're dealing with, yeah. um, and you know, part of this. Okay, let's get let's get positive as well. I mean, you can talk about peak performance. You know, there's certain. I mean, there's certain sports where you can't avoid getting hit, and there's certain sports where if you're clever, you can get hit less. Um, so I think there are a lot of. I, you know, I, I, I'm I. I'm not a big American football fan. I'll just put that on the table. If you want to dismiss what I say because of that, so be it. Okay, um, Canadian Football League. Uh, no, no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm European football, like the original football. That's why, but the heading in that is even dangerous. Anyways, where I'm going is, I think that. Um, it, I grew up in Fargo. We could talk. We could talk hockey here too. You yeah. Know? Okay. I mean, the, yeah. There you go. Okay. Maybe. Um. But you know, just the way you know, we we put seat belts in cars. I mean, they're they're you know, uh, you know, if a little kid is is riding on cement on a bicycle, wear a helmet. I'm not sure how necessary they are when you're, you know, uh, on, on areas without cars. But that's a whole other issue. But just we we have to start to be wiser about this. Yeah. You know the 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 holy grail of great success in in, in football uh, that's creating massive amounts in, in of brain damage i mean guys what is it like what is the most popular sport in high school it starts that young correct like everybody's rallying for this is that a not a correct assumption depends on the part of the country the south yeah. is into yeah. it and yeah. you know some parts you, it's hard to fill the football team you don't have the budgets and you don't have the crowds okay. you don't have the money so you you know you run yeah. into the issues yeah. Jay, well, going Far, to fargo's the football <laughs> <laughs> in snow shovels so yeah yeah the so, bison so i i know we hate to do this but like if we could wrap up this eeg okay vertigo that's inner ear that wouldn't be part of this but there well, seems careful to be... because the occipital lobe could also be involved and as i said jay pointed out the 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 the, the p3 as well and cerebellum yeah okay yeah. So. And, and this is but, what we hate because it's like you, you look we spent yeah. what 48 minutes on this and we're going to say oh it's definitely this it's we're looking for clues to point to yeah uh, this this is if you go to a doctor and you have a complaint, uh, the complaint should lead to the testing. What we've seen is evidence that should lead to testing. And the evidence we have seen suggests that an MRI would be useful. And our suspicion is the possibility of white matter change and uh, evidence of possible cerebellar or, or uh, potentially um, uh, uh, temporal uh, auditory inner ear uh, uh, issues, vestibular issues. Now, I would actually the, be confident, you know, this, this might surprise you, but I would actually be confident starting to work with the information we have, you know, just in terms of treatments that, that would wake up um, the occipital region of the brain. You know, depending on the budget of the person, we have to be really realistic about this as well. But as I said, with caution, slow, sure, um, not just your objective hard uh, EEG data, yeah. but also your subjective data of the client and um, probably family members around them as well. Very, very important. If it's a high school kid uh, and, and you're a, a parent concerned, uh, getting an EEG and uh, a VCPT, a visual cognitive performance, a continuous performance task, 
uh, where they actually have to respond and they, they watch the brain respond. Those two combined give you a good baseline. If there's any change, it's going to end up being easily identifiable and quantifiable. And the ERP associated with the visual continuous performance task uh, is considered solid evidence uh, if, if you were to end up having uh, somebody uh, uh, suggest that this was not a head injury or something, it's, it's considered diagnostic. Uh, the EG QEG data is always arguable. Um, you know, ischemia is ischemia. It could come from all kinds of ischemia. Uh, but the ERP, if you show a latency and peak change in an area, that, um, that's that, that's considered uh, solid diagnostic evidence. And again, so, pretest, pretest. If you have a, a a child that you want to get into these sports, um, get some baselines before yeah. they start. We have you know, a the right? test that Jay was talking about, of course, you're going to have some developmental change. They might even get better. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but, you if know. you're a, a coach and you're concerned about the cost of this sort of a thing, collect the data. You don't have to analyze it. Just mm -hmm. collect it. If there's an injury of some sort, you can pull it out, process that and the current stuff you just collected and see what the difference is. So love that. That, love it, that. you can... You can save some uh, overhead by, and <clears throat> uh, somebody's on the team and he's sat on the bench and, you know, gave people Gatorade, you know, I mean, the uh, and he doesn't, doesn't have any issue. There's no reason to have paid uh, for the analysis of, of the data unless somebody hits him in the head with a bucket of Gatorade or something. So, so MRI um possible and, stem that you need some type of mo modality for stem i'm using big words for myself jay <laughs> right and then if you were going to do just neurofeedback training on something would there be anything that you could do for this i just threw out their brain brightening but is there anything else that you would try to oh yeah yeah uh you know the in the eyes open condition uh, he, he needs to establish uh, activity that's actually oscillating up in the alpha, alpha band, not all in the theta band. So uh, uh, speeding up his background uh, frequencies, eyes open, uh, would end up giving him better uh, uh, perceptual acuity. Your, your background alpha is how many snapshots per second you're taking of the outside world. The alpha shutter opens and closes. So packets, packets basically our resolution. This yeah. is also though where, I mean, I, I would like to make a few suggestions, but I'm reticent because I would want to know more background. So for example, one of the things that I would suggest would be contraindicated if this person had insomnia. Uh, it would be contraindicated if this person had a, um, notable anxiety, uh, but you can quiet down a uh, good old fashioned uh, training. You can quiet down the slow activity in the occipital region, but, 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 and please don't cut this out. There, there are certain symptom sense that would counter indicate that. Um, so this, this is where we kind of get in the brain um, and the whole person. <laughs> bye bye. Bye guys. Bye. The NeuroNoodle podcast is supported by listeners and businesses just like you.